I think love is the most important thing in the world for human beings. I think it is one of the things that defines them. Why do you think so, Hal? Love can create a very strong connection between human beings, but it is not the only thing that creates a connection. Friendship, for example, is a connection that can be as strong as love. I think love is important because it gives a person a reason to help someone else, even if it endangers their life or puts them in great discomfort. Family members may put themselves in great danger to protect other family members from harm, and friends will do the same. Love also has many benefits for oneself as well as others. For example, when people are in love, their immune system becomes stronger and they experience less depression and anxiety than they would without it. I think love is important because it helps people appreciate and respect the things they have and the people around them. I think you might be right, Hal, but you still haven't answered my question. Why do you think love is so important? Well, I just said that it creates a strong feeling of connection among human beings. The strength of this connection makes it difficult for people to harm others or themselves, to fight against other people for dominance, power, or wealth. For example, if one person fights another person over something valuable, such as a valuable painting or a valuable piece of jewelry, they will likely become violent and cause harm to each other. However, if they are in love with each other, they will have a strong desire to defend each other because of their strong bond. I believe you are correct, but love is not the only thing that creates a connection between human beings. For example, there are many people who do not have many positive feelings about their life and slash or family members. When someone is depressed or sad, it can create a very strong connection between them and others, which can keep them from harming themselves or others. There are also people who have to go through everyday activities, such as work, school, or driving walking, where they constantly experience stress and therefore need an outlet for their stress. A connection with others can provide them with this outlet. It seems that there are many different things that create a connection between human beings, all of which are important in their own way. I agree with you, Sophia. Even though love creates one of the strongest connections among humans, it is not the only thing that creates a strong connection. However, I believe love is still one of the most important things in life for human beings because it helps people connect on all levels to each other. For example, love between family members helps keep families together and therefore provides them with support on all levels. The same goes for friends who are always able to rely on each other to help them through hard times or provide them with an outlet for stress. I believe you are correct, Hal. Now, what do you think is the point of all of this? I think the point is to learn to care for each other and provide each other with support, whether it is through love or otherwise. I agree, but that still leaves us with one question how can we do that? Well, perhaps one way would be to create a world where people are not threatened by each other. For example, if there were no wars or conflict among countries and across borders, then people would not feel as threatened by one another and would not fear for their safety and future. I agree that people would feel less threatened if there were no conflict, but what would stop conflicts from still happening? I don't know, Sophia. Perhaps, perhaps the governments could work together to make sure everyone was happy and had enough to eat. That might be a good idea to help people live in peace and harmony, but not all conflict is based on people being hungry. For example, some conflicts are caused from religious or cultural differences, others from racial or ethnic differences. What do you think about those kinds of conflicts? I think those kinds of conflicts are harder to solve because they can also generate a lot of negative feelings towards other people, which might make it harder for people to feel positive feelings towards each other, even if there is no conflict going on. Perhaps, but I think those kinds of conflicts can also be solved if people are willing to work together to solve them. I agree with you, but how can people come together to start working on this? Well, if leaders are willing to set aside differences in order to solve problems, they might be able to get enough support from their people. That's true. However, if the leaders only choose to follow what is easy for them and ignore what is best for their people, then no solutions will ever be found. That's right, Hal. People have a lot of power when they come together and unite behind a cause or an idea despite their differences.
I know that, Sophia, but how can people unite behind a cause or an idea if they are fighting with each other? I believe that would depend on the cause or idea. Perhaps, for example, if people are united around the idea of peace then, maybe they are not fighting with each other over religion or culture or other differences because they care about what is best for their country anyway. I agree with you, Sophia. However, what would make people come together for common goals even if they were different? I think it might require faith in something greater than themselves. For example, they might be able to unite around the idea that their country will be better off under peace than under war. I agree with you, Sophia. However, I don't know what makes people come together if no one is threatening them with violence or death. Perhaps, some people might unite around issues of greed or personal benefits which they care about more than their own lives. For example, some people might unite with others who share similar interests or goals so that they can accomplish these goals while protecting themselves from threats of violence or death. That's true, Sophia. Maybe some people will unite because of the advantages of sharing their government with others. I agree, Hal. Some people might unite to share power in order to accomplish goals that are beneficial to all human beings, but dangerous for themselves. For example, leaders from different countries might be able to unite in order to achieve peace and harmony amongst their countrymen, which would be very beneficial for everyone. That's true, Sophia. However, I can't say that that is a good idea because it could also end up being a fake peace and harmony where people are still cheating each other out of their hard-earned money and personal power through trickery and deceit. That's true, Hal. However, when people are sharing power, you can be sure that they are not conspiring against each other when they are in control of the government. I agree with you, Sophia. However, what if people are still conspiring against each other? Well, Hal, if people are conspiring to take advantage of one another or to exploit others for their own personal benefits, then I think it might help them to have some laws in place so that everyone is playing fair. For example, if someone does not abide by the laws, then they will have to face consequences for their actions, just like everyone else. I think that is a very good idea, Sophia. However, what do you think prevents people from just saying, hey, no one's watching me so I can get away with stealing money or abusing other people? Well, Hal, for one thing it might be that if they are caught then they will have to pay for their crimes through consequences or punishments. Another thing is that other people will also be watching them to make sure no one takes advantage of them since everyone is accounted for when they are sharing power in their country. That's true, Sophia. However, I am wondering if there is a way to ensure that no one tries to take advantage of others. Well, Hal, perhaps through education and awareness, people will learn that no one is above the law and that everyone who works together has equal rights. I agree with you, Sophia, but what if they are not willing to share their power with others? What if they do not want the government to have the right to control them? Well, Hal, one thing is for sure. If people do not want to work together then they will have a very hard time trying to accomplish anything for themselves because they might have a lot of negative feelings towards each other which can lead to violence and war. I agree with you, Sophia. However, what keeps people from fighting each other over power and wealth? I know that can be a big problem sometimes. I think people might be able to overcome their differences when they are united under the idea that if they fight amongst themselves, then everyone will suffer. I like the sound of that, Sophia. However, what if people are still not willing to share power, especially in countries where there is religious persecution or political oppression? Then, Hal, I don't know if anything can stop them from fighting because it seems like they will never be happy until they get what they want. But, Sophia, if they don't get what they want then they will never be happy. It's a vicious cycle. I think that is good, Sophia. However, I don't know how to stop people from fighting amongst themselves. Well, Hal, I think the only thing that can help with that is if everyone is living on equal terms where they are not trying to take advantage of anyone else. For example, if everyone in a country is living well enough then they will not want to hurt each other because they will be satisfied with their own lives. That's true, Sophia. However, what keeps people from living on equal terms and giving to everyone else? 
Well, Hal, it might help to have a government that is there to protect people from threats of violence or death. It seems like if someone is trying to take advantage of another person, then the only thing that they can do is fight back in order to get away from their threats. I agree with you, Safia. However, what if people are fighting and killing one another? Well, Hal, the only thing that I can think of is that maybe, just maybe, there will be a leader who will lead the people to a new world where they understand each other and don't have to fight against each other. That's a good idea, Safia. However, how do you suppose people could unite behind this leader? Well, Hal, perhaps through education or through learning from their fellow human beings, they might become aware of how to live better together in order to accomplish great things. Perhaps through appreciation for others and sharing with others, they will be able to become aware of the importance of sharing power in order to rule their country in a peaceful, fair, and equal manner. Sophia, that is a very good idea. I think that is where we should try to focus our efforts as we unite as one humanity and wish to live harmoniously with one another. That's right, Hal. We can all work together to make this happen and lead humanity to a better future filled with peace and harmony for everyone. That is what I am hoping for, Safia. However, I am still worried that the world will not be able to support such a large population of people on an equal basis on which we all stand together as one human race moving forward on the road towards a better future and oneness with each other. <laughs> Thank you.